Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman, And man, I tell you what, we have a special guest today. Another Beaver Lake guide. The whole show is just about guides, maybe, or something like that. But John Cochlin, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, is here with us. And uh, he guides for uh, walleyes, um, stripers, and crappies. So he does those three. So we're going to pick his brain and, of course, what we want to know the most is uh, is walleye fishing because that's what's different. You are a uh, uh, transplant. So you come down here and walleye are are like second nature to you, uh, you and, and how you catch them. And so uh, tell us first a little bit about the overall, um, what the fish population of walleyes are, what the length limit is, and maybe just like some forage. Give us that. You bet. Um the walleye were put into uh, Beaver Lake in 2008. They did initial stocking, I believe, about 2.5 million. And uh, subsequent years, they've put in 200,000 to 500,000 each year, depending on how they, uh, they electroshock them and pull out the females and right. strip them and, and do that. So uh, Beaver Lake's an interesting lake. Uh, it has... According to the Arkansas Game and Fish, the fastest growing walleye population pretty much in the United States. Wow. So uh, they put them in uh, at about three inches. Uh, they uh, get to 18 inches fairly quick. That's our limit is 18 inches and okay, greater to keep. To keep. And uh, how many of them can you keep? The limit is uh, four. Okay. And uh, you can keep four over 18. There is not a slot, so they have to be over 18 to keep. Okay. So what else about? Well, um, you know, Beaver Lake uh, is a big lake. Uh-huh. Uh, they We have two main tributaries that feed the lake, and uh, that is the War Eagle Creek. It's more of a river and the White River that come in, and uh, the walleye uh, go up those rivers in the in the springtime. Uh-huh. Uh, the biggest thing that people need to know is uh, our pre-spawn is pretty much in the middle of January, right? which is still pretty cold here. You yeah. get a lot of people that, don't realize that they think they run up you know the rivers in march april which pretty much they're done spawning at that time right uh so they come up into the river arms uh mid-january water temperatures are in the 40s usually uh that's a time of year when they're easier to catch for people right. it kind of shrinks the playing uh-huh. area right um we use a lot of uh picos we use uh a lot of uh, some people actually use brood minnow shiners, right. live bait yeah. on a Carolina rig. Uh-huh. So they're easier to catch in the springtime. They come up to spawn, uh, and then after that, then they head out to the main lake. Right. Uh, Mid May, they head off to the main points, and that's when we kind of flip over to uh, crawler harnesses. Okay. Which is this is where we've gone into another direction altogether. This uh, crawler harness is like. You're like speaking another language to some of us, and so uh, tell us uh, uh, tell us about uh, a crawler harness and and how they are rigged up. What's what's the hardware that you use? Well, I uh, use different blades, and what okay. you do is you have a bottom uh, quote bottom bouncer weight. Okay. Uh, you use a three way swivel. All right. Which uh, I have one here, and yep, what you do is way. off the. Your main line comes off one swivel. Your bottom bouncer, usually about two feet uh-huh. off of that. I use about a two-ounce weight to keep it down the bottom. And then we, I construct my own uh, spinner rigs. Right. Um, what you do is we use uh, different blades. This happens right. to be a Max Smile blade. We use this right here. Uh, you rig that on first, and you can right. do a combination of bead colors and... Uh, Usually use three to four beads. Um, sometimes I use a, a floating a pill float. Uh-huh, that looks it some, just like a pill. Yep. Right. And it, what it does is it gives it some body to the to the spinner rig. Uh-huh. And then uh, the hook that we use is a uh, slow death hook. Okay. It's true a, turn. It's like a true turn. It's got a little bit more of a bend to it. Uh-huh. The main thing who on makes a, that? What um, there's different companies that make them. Which one? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I believe this is a trocar hook. Okay. Um, Sharp. Yeah, they're good. Uh, what it does, though, is when you fish with, the, and we call these slow death rigs, okay? Right. So where that name comes in is the slow death. This is actually called a slow death hook. Right. And what it does is you don't use a whole night crawler on this. 
which, which a lot of people make a mistake, oh. is they you you use a half a night collar, you pinch it, and you put it on here. And what this will do, this hooks. We're using the tail end. Yeah, e- either end, but yeah. Oh, all right. uh, and what it does is when it comes through the water this, with the bend in the hook, it actually makes the bait rotate. I see. And that's where that slow death name comes in. Oh, it just right. kind of does this. It rotates so, all the way around then? Yes, it does. Degrees. Yes, it does. Okay. And uh, so what you want to do is when you make that uh, uh, that uh, rig there, you want to make sure you use swivels on top of the three-way. Okay. So, you know, you'll have a six-foot leader, and I'll tie a swivel on, a three, uh, just a regular swivel, and use that on, onto my three-way. Uh-huh. And that prevents that line twist. I got you. Um, so that's how we catch them in the summertime here. Uh, you control uh, crankbaits. Right. Um, what you want to look for is the thermocline. Uh-huh. Especially in the summertime, you look on your graphs. You know a lot about uh, electronics. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, the biggest thing is to learn what the thermocline looks like. And so you can target those areas. So are you fishing on top of the thermocline, in the thermocline? You just, you're just touching it. Uh, so what I do is if the thermocline, for example, right now is at 18 to 20 feet. Right. You're going to want to look off main points in that 18 to 20 foot water not uh-huh. necessarily out in 40 foot of water where the thermo is right. but those walleye will get on those points in that ideal temperature range it, like so if the thermo's at 20 you'll want to target your points at about 20 foot deep okay and what we do is we'll throw those crawler harnesses through those points uh-huh. the biggest thing with crawler harnesses is it's very slow right it's a mile an hour that's uh, how fast you boat. Yeah, you troll about a mile an hour. Okay. Walleye are very speed sensitive. Right. Same thing when you're trolling picos. Uh-huh. Sometimes they're going to hit at 1.5. Sometimes they want it at 2. Right. You hone in on that speed that they want. Now, in crawler okay. harnesses, you're going to be slow. It's a slow way to fish, but it's very effective. Um, and so are you putting them in rod holders? Are you holding them? No. What's the deal? No. So what we do with crawler harnesses... Um, is I have the clients when we're fishing for a uh, walleye uh-huh. with the nightcrawler harnesses holding the rods in their hands uh-huh. because the bite, you would think, you and I talked about this earlier, right. you would think the bite with a walleye with all their teeth and everything be real <laughs> aggressive. Uh, on a crankbait, when they hit that crankbait, they're on there. Right. But uh, when you're fishing crawler harnesses, I have them hold them in their hands because the bite's very subtle. You'll, they'll feel a tap. Right. And what I have the clients do is I tell them to let it drop it back to them. Right. And then you pull it forward. And if you feel that tap again, that's when you sweep set the hook. You don't set the hook straight up and down. Okay. You sweep set that hook so it hooks them in the sides of the mouth. Okay. Some people, like on a, you'll, they'll try to do a bass set. Right. And, you, and you'll pull the bait right out of their mouth. So. Um, well, why is there a two tap? What? How, how well, does that happen? You know. What they say and what I've read and, and kind of what I believe is um, while I have a tendency on bait, and, and we were talking about this earlier, uh-huh. they'll hit a bait to stun it, kill it, taste it to see if it's something that they want. Right. And what they'll do is then they'll come back that second time. So when we drop back to them, I tell them to feed, let it drop back to them. That's when they usually come in and hit it the second time and take it. I see. They flare out one side of their gills. Wow. That's a tendency that they do uh-huh. to turn the bait in their mouth. Uh-huh. They'll flare one side or the other out, and that second hit is when they're in there and they're flaring that out, and then they'll take that bait. Right. So it's it's crawler harnesses are a little more complicated, as we were talking about earlier. Right. Just tying them looks kind of yeah, tying them, you know, and. Uh, it's, it's not bad. Uh, you know, uh, if I had some mono, I could actually show you uh, how to do that. Maybe we can do that another time. Yeah. You can buy them in the stores. Oh, you can buy them pre-rigged. You can buy them, you can buy them pre-rigged. This is a Max. Uh, you can go into uh, different tackle stores. They'll have Max Smile Blades Slow Death Rigs. Uh-huh. And you just you buy the whole components already done. Right. Now, I do mine custom, just changing the color of the beads, uh, the right. length of the leader. Sometimes they're leader shy. Uh-huh. Sometimes I'll put an eight-foot floral leader on there to get it back away from the terminal, uh, you know, the three-way right. swivel. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes you could have a three-foot leader and they'll hit fine. But on this lake, 
beavers are clear lake as you know right and you know just like we do a striper sometimes you have to really downsize uh your leader test to get the hits and so that's you know that when you come into an eight to ten foot leader sometimes so we're a little spoiled today because as you can hear there is some wind but actually the white river's right behind us and so every time john goes by i get my binoculars out and i see if he's catching a walleye and if he's using slow death i know he's using a crawler harness if he's going one mile an hour but i know that he's using picos yep if he's if he's going that 1.5 little bit to, faster uh, yep to two miles an hour so uh uh, when would you use a crankbait? Well, what you what know, season? What, is there a window of opportunity that they're best to use? You bet. And it, it all goes in a cycle, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so spring, pre-spawn, they come up into the rivers. Right. Trolling picos is a great way. You know, our rivers up here will be seven to nine feet deep. The spawning trolls will be four to six. Right. These lures hit that depth. Uh, uh -huh. What I tell people when we're trolling picos is you want that to be ticking the bottom. Right. So walleye, for the most part, are bottom huggers. So you want that lure to be hitting that gravel, and you'll see it ticking the bottom. Right. Uh, that bite starts mid-January. It goes through about May. Um, and those are and those are um, you're you're actually uh, using uh, like a diver, like right? The INT, yep. which yep, will dive down to yep. It roughly 12 foot, and it depends how much line you let out is how deep it, it's actually going to go. And the nice there, thing, so. let me steal that from you. The nice thing about right, that yeah. is this will, even though you're on gravel shoals, that's right. where they'll spawn. This The bill keeps this from getting hung up. It, it will tick the bottom, right? and it really gets them, uh, it fires them up to, it's a reactionary bite pretty much uh -huh. uh, they're in there to spawn they're right. really not feeding but they're reactionary and this comes by them and ticking the bottom and they'll they'll hit it hey who's not going to eat a mcdonald's fry if it comes right in front of you yeah that's half my problem I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, i'm not starving to death but uh no i get it uh, uh yeah. but uh the pe the, the crankbait bite goes through Basically, the spawn, pre-spawn through the spawn. Uh, here, where Brad lives, these fish come by here up the White River to spawn. Um, come mid-April, they'll turn back around and they start heading back to the main lake to set up on their summer pattern. I do a lot of, uh, I do the reports for the Arkansas Game and Fish, and um, you can see that transition where it goes from cranks to the crawler harnesses. Now, that doesn't mean you can't catch them on cranks in the summertime. Right. Uh, you know, you've got to get out early in the morning or late at, you know, coming up to sunset. And if you can get these down to where they're at, and there's a few tricks that Brad can tell you, too, by adding a little bit of weight to them and things like that. That's right. You can get these down there. Um, the one thing is cranks are a lot easier to master than the crawler harnesses, as we've talked. Right. But uh, there's a certain time where those crawler harnesses, it's time to put it's time to put the hard baits away, and it's time to get the, yeah. and it's time to get the night crawlers out. When that thermocline sets up on our lake, it's usually around 82 degrees, 80 degrees, and then you'll start getting a thermocline. Right. When that thermocline sets up, what I've noticed over the years, that's when I flip over to the crawler harness. Right. Um, it's it's deadly, it's slow, but it will put fish in the boat. Right. Um, you know the only Do you downside. Think you catch bigger fish on a crawler harness. Yeah, it seems like you know. I don't know if they're bigger. You, your numbers are better. Right. Uh, the biggest drawback, and it's kind of a plus if you have kids. Oh, yeah. And you do the crawler harnesses, you'll pick up a lot of bycatch, which it's not bad. You'll pick up Kentuckys, right. spotted bass. You'll pick up big channel cats, big blue cats. You'll pick up, uh, you know, brim, bluegill. Uh, so you catch a lot of. So what I would say, if you're going to do a crawler harness, you better bring lots of, a, a lots of, lots of night crawlers because we'll go through four to six dozen in a day. 
Right. You've got a lot of action, a lot of bites. But, they're but, they're but you're not. also using the head. You're yeah, using both sections, Yeah, we're using both. Huh? We use both sections. I like to use the head part first with the heart. Yeah. I use that first. And what I do is when I break that off, uh-huh. I'll thread it not from the head but through the cut part back into the head. So I'll thread the whole crawler onto this hook to where there's just a little bit off the backside. And like I say, if you do the slow death rigs, which you can make them or you can buy them, you don't want to use a whole crawler because it hinders the spin. The spin is what gets those fish to react. Uh So the slow death rig, I highly recommend it. Yeah, There's a lot of different spinner rigs out there. Uh, You you know, there's all sorts of tech companies that make pre-made, pre-packaged. You don't have to make your own. I just do because I mess around with colors and size and things like that and... Hopefully, it, catch prob- my, it probably makes a difference. You yeah. know, you are a guide. So I am you, paid you're to coming do that. Up, <laughs> you're coming up with something that works, you know, yeah. 10% better than everybody else or 20% better. I mean, that's what that's what they want. True, and, true. And uh, those are... Theoretically, are that's the idea. So, yeah, you, you know, I get out there and I custom make all my stuff. And, uh-huh. uh, and, it, it, and it seems to work better. And uh, like I say, and what I would tell people is if you're fishing... And it's not a to hire a guide. Brad's a guide. I'm a guide. Uh, a guide can teach you a lot. I've used guides myself. Uh, if, you know, if you're not on Beaver, you're on whatever lake you're on. It's money well spent. Your learning curve without a guide's real flat. You take a guide out for a six hour trip, you're going to cut your time in you know ten per, ten times quicker. You're going to learn what to do right. just by watching. You know what they do, so I highly recommend. You know, it's not pushing me as a guide. Uh, you know, anywhere you're at, but I use I've used guides. You've probably used guides, and uh, you can learn something real quick. You can go out on your own and try this, and uh, it just takes patience, and and you can get there. Right. So uh, normally, when you're trolling uh, crawler harness, you're you're holding on to two poles or one pole? Cause I, how big a boat do you have? I mean, do you have a great big center console? I have, are a, you I have a 21 foot uh, express. Uh, so it's, it's, I would say people would say it's a big boat. Right. Um, but what we do, the, the one thing on crawler harnesses compared to cranks, I have a rod rack on my boat. You know, you've seen me out uh-huh. here. Yeah. You can run eight to 10 in Arkansas. We can run more than one rod. We can right. run. As many as you I, want. I guess there is not a limit. There isn't. It's how much headache you want. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll run eight to ten rods. You know, when we're striper fishing or trolling cranks, for we troll a lot of uh, picos for crappie. I'll have eight to ten rods out. Right. That's a whole other story. <laughs> you don't get them all tangled. But um, when I crawl or harness fish, because the bite is so um, tight, Right. You know, lighten just a little bit of a, you know, you just feel a little bit of a tap. You have to hold that rod. Right. I've tried. I've experimented with putting crawler harnesses on yeah. rods, and it just doesn't work. You just don't catch them. Uh, I but mean, they can hold two rods? No, that seems I mean. like a wide, so they hold one they rod, hold one on, rod. On, on one side. Yes, on and one side. And you put multiple people on. Yep, and yeah, I, can, I, I can stagger my customers, uh-huh. my clients. I can have four or five rods out. I have a couple out the back of the boat, right. two or three out the side, uh-huh. different okay. lengths out. Just like you do when you stripe a fish so they don't get tangled up. Right. So, yeah, but I would recommend holding your rod when you're using a crawler harness. How many people is the max you take out fishing? You get like 10, 15 people no, in the boat and have no. a disco ball. Yeah, no. We, I mean, <laughs> we take 10 or 15 people out and pull over on the bank out in front of your house. and. <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> come see you and have a good time on the bank. But no, 10, 10 or 15 doesn't work. But I like on, 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 on walleye, I like two, two to three. Two to three. Yeah, to be that able sounds to, reasonable. To, to be able to spend right. the quality time and, and, and let somebody learn something. Okay. So that's that's right. the biggest thing is trying to teach them something that they can use when they leave. All right. So in general, most of the trips you have are like two and three. People. Two and three. Right. Um, striper trips we can do, you know, because we can put out, as you know, you right. can put out eight to ten rods. You can have four people on the boat. Problem is with stripers, as you know, also right. is when you have four to five pull downs. Uh, 
we call it the striper shuffle. shuffle. You've, you've got fish going, going every different direction, and right. usually out of those four or five catch. fish, you maybe catch one. Right. You're cutting lines and everything <laughs> else, so it's a, it's a it's fun for the first three minutes, but then it's not so much fun. So, all right. Well, that takes us to uh, tackle time, and of course, uh, tackle time this week. Uh, we'll start with pico lures because we've been talking about pico lures, and we've been talking about crankbaits, and so they actually have. Uh, they got all. They got some. They got some wicked colors. Did you see some? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, oh, yeah. Things? Would that be a walleye? Color? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the big thing on on this. Are we looking at? Are we looking at more shad patterns? Or, oh, big, geezer this clown. Is, yeah. This oh my is, this God. is geezer clown. That catches everything. But yeah, this is a great. Now this is square bill, but the I you know the 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 deeper divers is what we use. Right. Uh, when we're when we're fishing the uh, pre spawn and spawn. Right. Anything in sh- anything that replicates a sunfish right. on this lake, and you, as you know, I mean they they kill, we kill the crappie on these. Um, you know, pink, uh, this this yeah. this uh, pink color works good. Um, pink. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at this one. Have you seen? Oh this yeah, one? I have. Some, I used those the other day for on a crappie trip. That speckled pink. That's a good color. Yeah, the splatter bath. Yeah. Oh yeah. Pink splatter bath. Yeah, that's is, an awesome. Uh, yeah, the awesome Vince color. did a good job on that. Yes, so. he did. And uh, chrome and blue, like chrome and blue. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We. Like, yeah, yeah. You know the biggest colors. The in the, in the pre-spawn and spawn, you get into these chartreuse and the oranges. Um, the, this color pattern is gonna work. Right. Um, if it sometimes hot pink, pink will work. Um, and sometimes they want a natural color. You know this. This right, this right here catches a lot of, for me, lately, this has been a crappie catch. That's a clown, clown color. And uh, this has really been doing good on crappie. Uh, the crappie, you know, it's a walleye show, but I use picos all the time. I do crappie trips in the yep. summer when the crappie, as you know, they suspend in that thermocline. These are killers. Yep. It's really the only way to catch crappie on this lake in the summertime. Throw them back uh, yep. 50 foot to 90 foot. Yep. And somewhere yep. in there, find out which, it, what they're hitting at and yep. replicate that. Different speeds. So so make sure you check out those. And Pico has a whole line. They have chick heads. they got everything you need to catch fish. So you can check them out at picolures.com. And, of course, our other sponsor, I thought it would be great since we had talked about, you know, catching a fish that we want to eat because walleye well, tastes really <laughs> yep. good. They're good yep. palates. Uh, is uh, the knives so actually uh, Smith Consumer Products? They actually have, um, you know, they got a couple different sizes. Like first striper, you want a longer, bigger blade right, that right. flexes, and of course this is the slab sticker, uh, the Mister Crappie, smaller, easier to use. You may use like the electric knife and right. trim it with with that. The thing I have to point out on these, and the thing that I love is they come with this cover. So it comes with a sheath. So, you know, you usually get a flay knife, and they don't have a cover. You're, like, walking around. Like, your yeah, wife's like, somewhat what, dangerous. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, you're, right. you're like, I don't have one of these. But anyway, the uh, the Smiths, um, Smiths do have that. So Smith Products, you can check them out at smithproducts.com. And now, John, this is kind of important. If they wanted to get hold of you, where would they get hold of you? Well, uh, my Facebook page, uh, my business page is called Fish on Guides, Goshen, Arkansas. You can uh-huh. look that up. Uh, my phone number is 479 area code 233-3474. You can contact me there. And then I have a, uh, uh, I'm an affiliate with Ozark Fishing Guides, which means uh, I have a friend of mine that owns that. He's a master at uh, marketing. I'm not. I'm a fisherman. I'm not a web guy. Uh-huh. So if you go to uh, Fish for Striper uh, or Ozark Fishing Guides, you can book me through there, too. So a lot of my bookings come through Ozark Fishing Guides. I got you. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Well, it's the end of the show. We've taught you all kinds of stuff about walleye fishing here on Beaver Lake. So you want to check that out. Probably will also work where you're fishing because a fish is a fish is a fish. That's right. So, uh, and like I like to leave the show is make sure you keep your hooks sharp, your lures in the water. That's right.